Very good. Having a chance of being part of a, of a great team uh, and, and, and seeing how the coach and the GM and everyone um, thought that I could contribute to that, um, you know, that, that to me said a lot. The team that just won a championship, um, you know, pitching those ideas to you and, and, and uh, that, that to me was, was awesome. Um, obviously, then there's a lot of, you know, history with, you know, a lot of other stuff. But uh, for me, the most important thing um, you know, is how it was going to fit on the court and how I was going to be able to help the team. Okay, next up, we're going to go to Kyle Goon with the Orange County Register. Hey, Mark, um, Kyle. Um, there was a report that you were considering playing in Spain. Um, obviously, that's your home and, and you've had this long history of playing for the Spanish national team. Um, how, how close were you to actually making that decision? And, and what about the Lakers kind of um, pulled you back to the NBA and kept your career going here? Um, that, that was not accurate at all. Um, I think someone, you know, made that assumption just because I'm not very, uh, you know, I'm not very, uh, very out there and, and communicate a lot of things. Um, I think people just try to, you know, make that decision for me and thought that that was a good time to to try it. Uh, but, you know, I never stated that, never even close to that. I never even spoke to Barcelona about it. Um, so that, you know, that that came as a surprise to me. Um, but, you know, that that's the world that we live in now. Uh, you know, you, you hear something and everybody runs with it. Um, and then, you know, just one, once a free agency opened up, the Lakers, you know, were one of the first teams I called and, and, and became interested in, in uh, me being part of the team, and, and it, it became pretty easy. Okay, next, um, Dan Wykey. Hey, Mark, Dan Wykey with the LA Times. Congratulations. Um, you've spent your career competing against LeBron James a couple times. You're never a playoff series or anything, but seeing him. What, what do you think it'll be like to actually play with him? And then I guess, secondly, um, you, you know, obviously the bubble was rough for you. Uh, now having a couple months to look back on it, um, what did you take from that experience? And, and, and what do you think uh, kind of moving forwards from it? So on the first part, um, you know, just being um, learning, learning and, uh, and, and being part of that and, and trying to, you know, add my experience um, to make the team um, a little better if possible. Um, you know, the attributes that I have as a, as a player, um, obviously uh, I, there's some things that I don't have. I don't have the above the rim love thread uh, all the time, but, uh, but you know, I can, I can do a lot of other stuff um, to help the team win and be better, uh, help my teammates be better as well. So, um, and when it comes to, uh, you know, the bubble, I thought that was the only way um, to, uh, to execute the plan that the NBA had. Um, it was a great setup. Um, it didn't work uh, great for me personally, um, mainly also because we, you know, win as a team and, uh, and I didn't perform at the level that I, you know, that I wish that I did, but I prepared myself to, to do that. And it just sometimes it just doesn't work out the way you want it. Um, I hope we don't have to go through that again. That, that, would be, uh, that would not be good news for us or, you know, on a bigger picture of the world. Okay, um, Dave McMenamin, please. Hey, Mark, Dave McMenamin with ESPN, good to see you. Um, you mentioned that you were the one who called the Lakers. Uh, I just wanted to see if you could give us a little bit of insight into that process when you called, <laughs> if it was Friday, who you spoke to, uh, to express your interest. And then um, just, uh, any comment on the fact that you're joining the franchise where your brother really made his name in the NBA? So, uh, no, I, I, I was, I, I was not the first one to call. They, they actually called first. They were the first ones, one of the first uh, franchises, if not the first one to call uh, me and, but it, that to me, that's not relevant. Uh, you know, who, you know, who, who did it first. It, it's not, it's not that important. It, uh, and then uh, what it mean to me to be a part of the Lakers, you said, or, just the fact that the pal won the two championships here uh, in LA, and and obviously you uh, were drafted by the Lakers, and just to to, to join. There's, a, I think there's a, a cool a bunch of cool um, backstories, uh, you know, for uh, before me joining the Lakers, being drafted, uh, you know, a while ago, 
by the team um, that that was you know um, sure, but uh, but it was kind of cool. Um, and then uh, then obviously White Spout through all his years here and and grow as a as a player and grow as as a man in LA. Um, actually, I, I had a chance to be um, in uh, both playoff series. You know the ones uh, the one that they lost in Boston and 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 then the one that they won. In, in the Staples, uh, I was there too. Um, so, you know, got to live uh, up close. A lot of people that are around the team that, well, you guys know, but probably the big public doesn't know and, and tell how they interacted and how much, you know, they care about the players, how um, how great they took care of them. Um, you know, so all those things are, are awesome. And, and I think, you know, I think they, they're a role model for a lot of teams in the NBA. Thanks. Yep. Okay, uh, Bill Oram, please. Hey, Mark. Uh, welcome. Bill Oram. I cover the team for The Athletic. Um, you know, last year, the Lakers had one of the top defenses in the league with these, you know, two high-flying kind of rim protectors at center in JaVale and Dwight. I'm curious, um, you know, at this stage in your career, different kind of defender. What, what, what do you see the, the way this team has been built? Uh, what kind of defense you guys can have? And maybe what have some of your conversations with Frank, if you've had the opportunity to have those yet, um, have sort of uh, shown you about, sorry, screaming baby, uh, shown you about, the, about the, um, what this defense could look like? Um, you know, obviously, uh, I'm, I'm, I try to get to places before I have to jump in the air because my, you know, my, my time that I'm going to spend in the air is not uh, very long. But, uh, you know, I try to use my, uh, my instincts and my knowledge of the game and uh, the way that I studied to get there before the, you know, the offense gets there. Um, so uh, use a lot of communication as a center. You know, you're behind them. Um, I think communication builds trust. Um, and it, it is solves problems. Um, you know, whenever the, we see um, an issue, I know we're going to have that great communication. Um, we're all going to be in the same page because at the end of the day, uh, you know, you need defense to win games. Uh, uh, I think the whole team is a defensive-minded team. Um, Frank is a defensive-minded coach. Um, but everybody, you, you, as you can, you know, once, once you start studying, I'm sure you guys have um, how the playoff went. Um, they're very open-minded. Um, they're not afraid. Um, they're creative, and, and you know, I think that's 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 a great sign because that you know that means that everybody has a lot of uh, capabilities and ways of doing different things. So um, it's it's great, great to see. Okay, next up, Melissa Rowland. Okay, it looks like Melissa is on mute. So we Can you hear me now? Yeah, go ahead, Melissa. I'm so sorry about that. Um, just kind of a follow up to Dave's question. I'm curious when you when Powell found out that you were coming to the Lakers, what was his reaction? And obviously, playing for the Lakers is uh, you know very unique. Did he give you any advice going forward about uh, playing in LA and playing alongside uh, playing with this organization? Uh, no, we haven't really, you know, he hasn't really given me advice uh, at this moment. Uh, other than, you know, I know where he lived at. I know the area quite well. Uh, I got to spend a lot of time um, with him. Uh, you know, like I said, you know, uh, around the team back then and uh, around the city back then as well. So um, he hasn't given me any advice on, on, you know, it was a completely different team than it is now. Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't think there's any players left from back then and a uh, really different coaching staff. Uh, so it's, you know, it's, it's up to me to make it work more than anything. Okay, um, Alan Sliba. Hey, Mark, uh, welcome to the Lakers. Alan Sliba with uh, 710 ESPN. Um, I just want to get your, now that the dust has kind of settled a little bit, your thoughts on the roster and your thoughts on uh, playing with Anthony Davis specifically, just how, how you two can jive together. Um, you know, playing with another, you know, I don't you can call it big, but he's, I mean, he's so unique um, uh, that, that, that I, I can you know, do different things on the court to create space for him. Um, try to give him easy, easy baskets, not only for him, but any teammate. I always look for uh, making their job easier on offense, trying to have uh, the defense uh, chasing the ball a little bit and, and not knowing what's, what's going to happen and, and being a step ahead. Um, obviously, you have, you know, a, a 
point guard that is uh, unique as well in you know, LeBron and uh, and kind of understand how you know how we can work as a team uh, and everybody else too like to me it's just obviously those two guys are unique and, and 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 kind of the head of the team but then the rest of the group we all have to work uh, as a unit as well and everything has to you know be in, you know, on the same page so um it's going to be fun i can't wait to start working with the team and and understand everybody's tendencies and uh and and, and what they like to you know, work at and, and, and operate on, on the floor. Obviously, I know the tendencies from playing against, um, but at the same time, putting that into uh, their comments and, and, and seeing uh, one-on-one what they like to do and, and seeing it firsthand, it's, you know, I think it's going to be pretty awesome. It's a great challenge for me. Uh, I look forward to it. Okay, next up, Andy Kamenetsky. Hey, Mark, uh, Andy Kamenetsky, uh, helped cover the team for The Athletic. Um, you're known as one of the best passing big men in the league, and LeBron's obviously one of the best passers ever. Um, how, how do you picture the different ways you guys can utilize those passing skill sets together? Um, we're going to have to, you know, see it and, and see it on the floor and, and see how it works. Uh, I, I'm, obviously, I'm a first uh, pad kind of guy, um, but, you know, somebody's going to have He's going to score too whenever at his will. Whenever he decides to score, he's going to be able to score. Uh, obviously, it's different when you pitch it from the outside than than one during the inside. Uh, see how can you adapt to 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 his game and the team game because they they play a certain way. Um, there's a lot of flow to their offense um, and a lot of triggers that they create on the two and two or even on the fast break. They create a lot of points. But that starts defensively and creating those stops so the, the team can fly out and uh, and create easy point, points. So um, that transition, it's it's going to be fun um, having him as a as a quick outlet and an easy target because he's uh, such a you know big target that you can get. Or even Anthony Davis uh, when he contests the, the shot and runs um, and the wings, having KCP or whoever else the other wing is, uh, you know, it's going to be fun. Um, but it all starts getting getting those stops. Okay, we'll just do a couple more, Mark. Um, we're going to go to um, Josh Lewenberg. Hey, Mark, it's Josh Lewenberg from TSN in Toronto. Congrats on the deal. Um, outside of the obvious and winning a championship, what will you remember most about your time in Toronto? And then it sounds like your decision came down to the Raptors and the Lakers. How, how tough was a decision? How tough of a decision was that for you to make? Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, Josh. Hey, Mark. Hi. Um, so uh, it, it was it was tough. It was very hard. Um, you know, uh, the first uh, you know couple uh, couple days uh, you hey, know Bob. were uh, were a little tough for me. Uh, but you know, once you kind of uh, decide, okay, where what you want to do next, where how you want to go about your uh, next uh, challenge, uh, I thought. The right thing to do was, uh, you know, go go with the Lakers. Uh, how I'm going to remember the Raptors, uh, you know, first I'm going to miss Toronto. Uh, Toronto, it's been a, uh, a great place. My my family was very settled there, very comfortable. They they really enjoyed uh, their time. My kids love their school. Um, you know, everybody that probably you know the Raptors I know about, but you know, teachers, uh, parents at the school, um, everyone that we interacted with, um, you know, we we we're going to miss uh, the early and, uh, and, and that's just the way um, sadly this business goes. Um, but I thought my run in Toronto could not get, get better. And, and, you know, ready, you know, uh, we would always be chasing um, the next uh, ring that I, I wasn't sure that we were going to, you know, I was going to be able to be the player that they needed me to, to be there in order to win it. Um, so, you know, I thought that uh, the, 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 the right thing to do for me was uh, to join the Lakers and, and contribute to what they got going on. Um, I told my teammates uh, that remain there, you know, Kyle, Freddie, Pascal, Norm, um, and, and the rest of the guys, and even coach, um, how much they, they meant to me, how much they helped me. Um, and, you know, I'm going to miss them a lot. Uh, I can't lie to you because, you know, we, we went through something together that is very unique, that is very special. And, uh, and it creates a bond uh, forever. Uh, and, and, you know, no one can take that away from us. Thank you, Mark. All the best to you and your family in LA. Thank you, Josh. 
Okay, Kari Jones. How you doing, Mark? Uh, congrats on your, um, signing with the Lakers. Can you speak on, you know, obviously you won the championship in 2019 with the Toronto. Can you speak on, on how, how you're going to bring that championship mentality to the Lakers and help them uh, uh, compete for another one? Hi, Kerry. Uh, I, I think they, they, they already have that mentality. And that was something that, I, you know, uh, on our conversation, that's something that, I, you know, I, I, of course, uh, the guys are hungry for more. It's not like, you know, it's a, it's a one and done deal. Uh, everybody, everyone in the locker room started with their leadership. Um, once more because that's just the way they are built and uh, and that was very you know very refreshing to see um, and, and everyone is on the same page uh, so you know I'm just going to contribute um, with with my skill set uh, with my mindset as well as a player I like to compete a lot I compete um, you know it's kind of a gift and a curse I compete at everything I do uh, all the time uh, obviously there's things that I do that I do very well and there's some things that I just uh, physically, I'm not, you know, that kind of player, but uh, I'll make up for it, you know, with, with my greed and my, de and my determination um, mm -hmm. to get a, a win. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Okay. And Mark, the last two will be in Spanish. Are you okay with that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm good in Spanish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Claudia, you're next. Mark, bienvenido a Los Angeles. Claudia Gestro del Canal 22. ¿Me escuchas? ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo estás, Claudia? Claro que sí. Mucho gusto de verte de aquí por aquí. Uh, los Ángeles Lakers tienen un grupo de jugadores con tamaño que, que pueden jugar en conjunto. ¿Te gusta ese estilo? Uh, sí, me gusta, me gusta el estilo. Me gusta formar parte uh, de esa mentalidad uh, defensora, uh, que ellos le, les gusta mucho trabajar en defensa como, como grupo, como equipo, utilizando su tamaño y su inteligencia para, para ganar partidos. Entonces, formar parte de un equipo con esa mentalidad y esas capacidades es, es especial. Vas a jugar al lado de Montres Harrell. ¿Qué posibilidades ves de esa combinación? Um, él es un jugador que es muy bueno uno contra uno. Um, intentarle generar en canastas fáciles con, con mi manera de, de jugar, de pasar el balón um, y nada, intentar a, aportar al equipo lo máximo posible. Y último es, ¿cuál es tu mensaje para todos los fanáticos de Los Ángeles que te están mirando? Nada, que es un, un, un placer, un orgullo para mí formar parte de una franquicia con, con tanta historia, una responsabilidad también y que lo voy a llevar con muchísimo orgullo. Estoy seguro que que va a ser, uh, pues eso, una experiencia muy especial y espero que se sientan, se sientan bien representados. Muchas gracias, bienvenido. Muchas gracias. Okay, and last question is with Andres. Uh, hi, Mark. Hola, Mark. Uh, es Andres con Marca Claro. Uh, bienvenido a Los Ángeles. Uh, la primera pregunta es, uh, ¿qué, ¿cuáles factores tomaron tu decisión para decidir Los Ángeles sobre Toronto? Y si crees que tú puedes igualar el mismo suceso que tuvo tu hermano con los Lakers, uh, con ese equipo que vas a jugar aquí en los próximos dos años. Uh, al final, se, lo decidí básicamente por, por, por las ganas de levantarme cada día con, con la opción de ganar uh, y ganar, a, pues, o contribuir más que ganar, contribuir a... a a un equipo que es, que es ya muy especial, pues intentar contribuir a que, a que sigan siéndolo. Um, el hecho de que ellos cre, creyeran desde el primer momento que, que yo realmente...
Thank you.